In today's video, we're gonna cover the best kinds of magnesium that you can get and the worst kinds of magnesium that you can get. We're gonna talk about things like magnesium threonate, we're gonna talk about things like magnesium glycinate, we're gonna talk about these forms of magnesium that are really easy to digest and good for you, and then we're gonna go through some of the ones like magnesium aspartate and magnesium oxide that quite frankly are a little bit of a waste of money. So we're gonna list them out and we're gonna talk all the details. Hey, I ask you do hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon, new videos every single day day. Let's jump right in. Okay, so magnesium threonate is top on my list for my favorite magnesiums. Okay, magnesium threonate is unique because it gets in your brain. Okay, you can't just eat a bunch of magnesium or eat a bunch of magnesium rich foods and have it go to your brain. It's not quite that simple. When magnesium is bound to certain compounds, it makes it so that it can cross through the blood brain barrier. Okay, magnesium threonate is just that form of magnesium. Now it increases what's called synaptic density. So what that means is it increases the uh, how much your neurons and how much the synapses are close together, meaning they're much more efficient at passing a message. If I were to throw you a ball from you know, 30 yards away, the likelihood of me actually hitting your glove or hitting your hand is gonna be a little bit less than if you were six inches away, right? Well, it's the same idea with messages within your brain, and magnesium is going to help that process out. However, magnesium doesn't always get into the brain. So magnesium three and eight does make sure that it crosses the blood-brain barrier, which is why it's a little bit more expensive, but probably one of the better ones if you're looking for more cognitive function. Now, jumping right into my next favorite one, magnesium glycinate. Okay, magnesium glycinate is magnesium that has been bound to the amino acid known as glycine, and this is the relaxing magnesium. This is the magnesium that helps you calm down. It's one you might want to take when it's time to go to sleep or time to just relax a little bit. Okay, glycine alone has very powerful properties within the body. Okay, glycine does help you relax via the activation of what is called GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid. Basically, it just turns your brain into calm mode. Now, what the cool thing is, is that magnesium glycinate is what is called a chelated form of magnesium. This means that you're absorbing the magnesium in its whole form. It doesn't get broken down and go through this ion exchange within your gut. For those of you that are science nerds, you know what that means. But the simplest way to describe it is it absorbs in its whole form, which means you're getting a full bioactive magnesium that's actually going to help you out a lot more. Now, glycine is one of my favorite amino acids. Acids. And the reason is, is because it does calm you down. But one cool little nerd fact about it is that glycine increases the blood flow to the extremities. And what that means is that it causes your body to cool down a little bit. If you've ever taken a hot bath before bed, you know that, well, you kind of cool down after you get out of the bath and it's easier to fall asleep. Well, glycine has that sort of effect just naturally because it increases the blood flow. So let's move on to the next one, magnesium torate. Okay, again, you're gonna spend a little bit more money on magnesium torate, but if you're someone that's active or someone that deals with potential like muscle issues or muscle pain, this might be the one for you. I like to work out, so magnesium torate's high on my list because it's bound to taurine. Now, if you look at energy drinks and things like that, you always see they have taurine in it. Why is that? Well, it's because taurine is supposed to help with clearing out some of the waste in the muscle, therefore helping you out with energy production. So that's why magnesium taurate makes my list for the active person. It can, in some wraparound ways, help you have more energy, but most importantly, it kind of helps you with that recovery process. And because it's bound to the taurine, what it's gonna do is it's going to calm down the nervous system, specifically at the musculoskeletal level. This is, again, good for people that are active. There have been studies that have shown that people that are low in taurine end up having an overactive nervous system and they're overreactive to stress. So it could be also good for someone who is feeling like they're a little bit edgier than normal. Maybe you're just, I don't know, things are bothering you more than they normally would and I don't know. So you end up saying, well, maybe I'm just, my nervous system's overstimulated and it's already pushed to the max. Magnesium taurate is for you. But it's definitely just what I would consider, and these are my own words, nothing else, kind of almost a detoxing magnesium simply because it does help clear out the waste from your muscles. But let's not waste any more time. Let's go on to a good overall magnesium, which is gonna be magnesium chloride. If you're just looking in general to elevate your magnesium levels, most doctors are going to recommend magnesium chloride. Because once again, it's chelated and has an extra chloride molecule. What that means is that it's going to help with the production of gastric juices, hydrochloric acid. Now, as we age, we actually have a decline in hydrochloric acid. People think that, uh, acid reflux and things like that, it's caused by too much acid. A lot of times it's the overproduction because the body isn't seeing enough. So it's kind of a wraparound way and sort of a double-edged sword. Point is, is that magnesium chloride absorbs very, very well. So if you're just looking for overall good magnesium, I would recommend that. Now another honorable mention within this case is going to be something called 
dimagnesium malate or magnesium malate bound to malic acid. Still a very safe way and a good way to just get your overall magnesium levels upregulated without spending a whole bunch on magnesium uh, chloride, which can be quite expensive. Okay, now we're gonna move in to the worst ones. Now I will say there's no real bad magnesiums. It's just what are you wasting your money on? Because some of them aren't just gonna absorb as well and some of them actually could have some potential negative drawbacks. Uh, hey, by the way, if you wanna know what I recommend in terms of magnesiums, I did go ahead and put a link down below to a company called Jigsaw, who is like the leader in magnesium and I've done some work with them. Uh, I've done some work on their clinical studies that they've done on their own magnesium. So if you're interested in the best kinds of magnesium to get and you're, you're just shopping for magnesium, I highly recommend you check them out. They're a big supporter of this channel, so thank you, Jigsaw, but also just special pricing down below if anyone wants to check them out. Now let's go ahead and let's move into the worst magnesiums. Magnesium oxide. Now, unfortunately, this is one you're gonna see all over the place. Magnesium oxide is everywhere, like the grocery stores, the typical pharmacy. Okay, what they do is they take magnesium and they basically just burn it with pure oxygen. What that means is two things. One, you're largely dependent on where you get the magnesium. So if the magnesium is coming from a poor source, nothing's getting changed, it's not getting cleaned up, okay? It's just getting burned. And that means that you could have a wide variety of good magnesium versus bad magnesium, even if you're looking at two that say magnesium oxide. But the more important thing to note is that you're looking on average like a 4% absorption rate. Okay, that's not worth your money. So even if it looks a little bit cheaper, it's just not worth it. So I highly recommend you just go away from that, spend a couple extra bucks, get some good quality magnesium that is maybe suited for what your need is, and you know, call it a day. Now we have magnesium glutamate and magnesium aspartate, which I put into the same category. Okay, these are magnesiums that are bound to either glutamic acid or aspartic acid, which are what are known as excitotoxins. Now, the reason they bind them to these things that aren't that good is it's a relatively inexpensive way to still call it a chelated magnesium. But there's just a quick thing that we have to understand here. One of the benefits of magnesium is that it blocks or protects what is called the NMDA receptor. What that means is it sort of puts a wolf at the door from your nervous system and for your cells. It protects your cells from getting overstimulated. That's why magnesium is so great for just being calm, right? Well, unfortunately, when magnesium is bound to like aspartic acid or glutamic acid, those are what are called excitotoxins, which actually excite the nervous system and excite the NMDA receptor. So you're kind of counteracting the whole process in a relatively cheap way to chelate magnesium, they defeat the purpose of magnesium. So I just don't recommend it because you're kind of wasting your money because you're balancing out to net zero, right? Now, the one that you really need to use caution with, and again, there is a practical application, is going to be magnesium citrate. Magnesium citrate is an osmotic laxative. It is not one that you should be using to get your levels of magnesium up. As a matter of fact, if you take magnesium citrate, you're going to have a bowel movement in probably 30 minutes to six hours, and it's gonna be pretty robust to the point where like, you're probably gonna lose some minerals. So unless you absolutely need a laxative, you shouldn't be taking magnesium citrate. Because remember, when you have kind of the water rushing into your intestinal tract and then kind of uh, rushing out, you might be losing magnesium, sodium, potassium, and all your other vital minerals that you need to really sustain good kind of electrical function of your body. So this is just a simple breakdown of the magnesiums. Are there more? Absolutely. And I love to talk about magnesium, but I wanted to make this video quick and easy for people that are just trying to navigate the crazy world of magnesium supplements. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and don't forget to turn on those notifications. I'll see you soon.